Hello, welcome to another tutorial video. We're going to be looking now at question four and the A to C grade comparison. Remember, we're going through these even though we've gone through them in, in one way before. We're going to go through them side by side, um, or at least bits of them side by side, so you can see the difference between an A grade student and a C grade student. And uh, I remind you that that is a really good <clears throat> way of going about it uh, and in fact after you listen to these videos it would be useful to you to actually write down or try and write down any key points you remember it just reinforcing your learning in any way possible is always going to help and learning the same thing in different ways is always going to help so yeah hopefully you'll be able to satisfy some of those um, goals with with this so looking at the first difference then you make clear they've both gone for an essay which is very good it just um, well, it is basically an essay question because the amount uh, of marks is actually available for it. What you want to be able to do, what, what this first person has done here is if you look at the first three paragraphs, these first three paragraphs are all about source three. Okay, so the whole thing there, nothing is mentioned in, in, in about section, uh, sorry, the second one. So straight away here, all the marks here, I'm getting zero for my cross referencing and um, my comparing. So that isn't bad you know it, it's fine to do that but it's just not as developed a skill as what's going on over here if we look at the paragraphs here so we can see up to all of this is all about source 2 and then all of this is all about source 3 and then all of this is about source 2 and then all of this is about source 3 so in the same paragraph here we've got the comparison comparison comparing sorry and the cross-referencing going on that's stronger that's going to get us more marks um, higher up now this is if you're going to write an amazing piece anyway then the cross-referencing marks you might kind of get by by default um, or if you're going to get um, say this is a 60 mark question if everything else you've done is 16 but your cross-referencing is more bitty you, you you know you've got points that you can afford to lose but for most of us we're not gonna have those points that we can lose do the one you feel most comfortable with but please practice doing this before you say you can't do it it's actually all it is is doing is um, taking like the bits that you talk about down here and then just adding them for example to the end of that paragraph so that's all it is in terms of a thought process obviously I'd need to reword this to actually make it fit but um, the the actual process is is the, sorry that's all it is so you, you're not doing anything massively different it's just showing whether you can think about it at the same time or whether you need to get one out of the way before going on to the next one so yeah give it give it a go and then see see how that works out the second thing that we're actually going to pick out on this is the lack of some of the development so let's take the this first one here so in passage three, the writer uses very descriptive language to help build a picture for what is going on. She tells us she was full of anticipation. Okay, so I've said that there's descriptive language and that she's full of an anticipation here. And I've analyzed the word full. The word full shows how much she's hoping and looking forward, um, which has an effect on the reader as we can relate, and also allows us to understand how much she's looking forward. Now, that second part's a bit tautologous. You're not really saying anything new there. But the point is being made that this will have an effect on the reader, giving us something to relate to. But it doesn't directly tell us what we're relating to. So it's a little weak on how exact it is. It's a little under undercooked. Let's take this example here um, and just just to be a little a little more accurate or how you'd want something like that to read dramatic language is far more evident in source 3 where Claire Francis deals with a ghastly moment of silence which gives us the feel of utter dread as something terrible is about to befall her so I've picked up on several things there so first of all the word ghastly you know I've actually referenced to give us utter dread and there's a moment of silence uh, which is preceding something bad happening and I've actually mentioned that there as well something terrible is about to befall her so in the that uh, sorry the use of that phrase there I've unwrapped it into two specific things the feeling for us the reader and the sense of doom that's about to come in whereas in this one I analyze the word full and I just say she was hoping not specific and I also just say it allows us to understand and relate again not spe not specific so the thing that we can actually pick up from the a is the a there is that it's a lot more specific in what it actually references with the with the growth um, here we have examples as well so this is a good one actually the writer uses simile to help make a strong image in our heads when she tells us like a dirty, dirty washcloth I was spun rinsed 
This description gives us an idea of how much movement there is in the sea, and she's being moved about in all directions. Now that's a bit better than the one up here. It's a little more specific, because we know this is all about the idea of her being on a boat, the association with a boat, and then water, and then the washing machine. So this gives us the idea of how much movement there was in the sea, it should be on the sea, and then moving about in all directions. So that's a little more developed. Compare it though with the uh, description, excuse me, used for, for this, part here okay which also references in this evocative language is also used in source 3 but builds a sense of doom so straight away I'm actually highlighting it's not a strong image in our heads which is is being um, um, you know just it's not really uh, what's being so excuse me it's not developed enough here we've actually got the language is being specifically spoken about in giving us a sense of doom France explains the boat would leap then crash down on the other side this is a powerful scene we imagine having heaving ship tossed around and then within that fully understand that she's being tossed around like an item in a washing machine so uh, I, it, basically it's the same point but then written a lot better here and also with more cross-referencing and the fo focus isn't necessarily on the simile but on the actual uh, the language that you know really brings something evocative really bringing something to mind really bring making something clear for us and making it stand out for us so that's that's that, that's better written even though it's a, it's a similar point and it's a little more perceptive because obviously it cross references more and uses more thing without focusing simply on the uh, the simile um, one of the other things that you notice here is here we're actually looking at the language so here we're, sorry we're looking at both in the language but the range of language kind of assessed and analyzed here is far greater than the one that's over here in the sea so here we're looking at language techniques so I picked out an onomatopoeia here and here I've picked out where's the simile yes here we picked out a simile here we're actually saying that language is dramatic and here we're saying that it's more calm and relaxing so what I'm referring to there is the tone but uh, so I've got tone really the tone and feel dramatic and calm and um, uh, language analysis of the simile and then again the, the tone again so I've got peaceful peaceful dramatic um, and descriptive yeah so basically the two or three different ways that I'm looking at here hopefully this one will actually show that it's got more uh, more of a range okay so we've got first of all the technical difficulties mentioned we've got the the humorous element of the writing mentioned we've got the evocative nature of the writing mentioned we've got the see the similes and stuff haven't really been picked out upon here because that's we, it, it's not the highest level of language analysis you know this is the language analysis overall the specifics is good but the the overall analysis here is good I would definitely do this as well I would definitely pick out the um, the uh, the language devices used but it's not uh, as it, it's it, it's not a deal breaker if you see what I mean you know being able to get the overall sense of how language does something is more important so we here we've got yeah, the mention of dramatic language dramatic language the mention of the evocative experience and the fact that it's mentioned as warm which is similar to the peaceful the evocative language mentioned again which gives us the powerful scene um, the language use differs um, we've got the humor here and then we've got the technicalities and then yeah we've got the um, We've got the intention of the writer, sorry, being cast as an, author, as an authority figure as well, you know, tying in with the technicalities. So even though there's just one or two more bits of analysis, everything in here is also picked out here, but there's just one or two more with the actual kind of the tone and the style that are actually picked out and, and the purpose linked more heavily, the, especially with humor, linked more heavily to purpose. So they're the three things that I think really make the differences standing out, the cross-referencing.